percent. Getting a raise is always nice. So here's what the raise looks like in real terms. The average Social Security recipient receives $1,681 a month or just over $20,000 a year. In 2023, the monthly payment rises $146 a month to $1,827 or $21,172 a year, a $1,752 increase. Now, Pat's hard work, income, and contributions to the system over... It should also be noted that the latest round of stimulus payments were limited to individuals with adjusted gross incomes of 75 grand or less that were entitled to the full 1400 bucks. It was reduced for those making more than $80,000 receiving a payment. I also want you guys to know that the IRS may owe you money based on crisis-related funds. Stimulus funds, that is, if you haven't even gotten your stimulus check yet. A ton of information about the Ford stimulus check is here, and stimulus payments are here for you and the people that need it the most. Chuck Schumer and the Senate could give a final proposal and approval by Thursday, in a weak extension of the stimulus payments. Schumer said the House of Representatives is set to act on a one-week continuing resolution and a stopgap funding bill as soon as tonight. And when the bill comes to the Senate, we should be ready to get this done as soon as possible. So Chuck Schumer also said the House Republicans have encouraged their leaders to vote against their bill in a protest of what they call trillions of dollars of wasteful spending, even though it's going to the people that need stimulus the most. The House of Representatives had already passed a short-term funding bill last night to avoid this government shutdown. They kicked the Friday funding deadline next week to allow lawmakers more time to strike a deal on the spending for the remainder of the fiscal year 2023. The continuing resolution passed in a 224 to 201 vote and now heads to the Senate where it must pass and be sent to President Biden's desk before midnight on Friday to avoid a shutdown. This measure will keep the government funded at current levels until December 23rd. Also, folks, in a notice sent by the House Minority Leader, he said that leadership recommended Republicans to vote no on the bill in an attempt to buy additional time for a lame duck session. But now this means that gas prices are continuing to drop as demand lowered and oil prices held steady. The national average for a cost of gas is $3.26, and that's $0.50 less than a month ago and $0.06 less than a year ago. As the winter weather keeps people homebound, less demand for gas and continued stability in oil prices has contributed to the steady decline of gas prices. AAA spokesperson told Fox News that the seasonal pattern of less driving due to shorter days and crummy weather combined with lower oil costs is driving gas prices lower. If this trend continues, many states could see their average gas price fall by 3 bucks a gallon. Under the weight of economic concerns, everybody, a possible surge in crisis and a changed psyche is causing oil prices last week to fall again to nearly a decade low. Oil prices have struggled mightily to hold its rally even on some potentially bullish news, each time falling back down as fundamentals look struggles. Gavin Newsom even said that he announced a proposal to penalize oil companies for reported price gouging in a bid to deter excessive price increases and keep people in California safe from this inflation spike. Under the proposed law, state agencies would even close more review gas costs, profits, and pricing as well provide the state with greater regulatory oversight of the refining. What this means is that stimulus payments are being on hold for now because of the gas prices. And now, the Census Bureau also projects that the problem will become more widespread in the coming years as more baby boomers who began turning 65 years in 2021 join the rank of the retired. In 2050, the U.S. population ages 65 and older will be 90 million, nearly double what it was 10 years ago. So in a triple ARP report, more than a third of the people 65 and older described their financial situation at mid-year as worse than it was 12 months before. It was a huge jump from the 13% of adults who said they did the same thing in January. But now the Fed has announced its seventh and final rate hike of the year, so Jerome Powell said, I wish there was a more painless way to restore price stability, but there isn't. The last four federal fund rate hikes have been 75 basis points, while the newest one is a jump of 50 basis points. It brings the target rate range to 4.25 and 4.5%. It's becoming the most expensive to borrow, even as stubborn inflation keeps rate high. So folks, there are many older Americans, that, especially on home delivery meals and legal assistance, that are facing tough times. Even a few hundred bucks in extra stimulus money can help them out. So individuals who recently signed rebates through the Pennsylvania property tax can get this stimulus check from the governor, Tom Wolf. He's giving stimulus payments to people that need it the most because that means stimulus checks are helping those in need of the most. Mr. President, in America, we call this is bringing the press in out of the cold. And it's not laughing. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not laughing. 
Estados Unidos cuando tenemos a la prensa le decimos que anyway, traemos el gráfico del invierno. I'm glad to see you again after a successful summit we had the summit of the Americas in June. En realidad es un placer tenerlo aquí con usted, recibirlo después de la cumbre de las And Américas. And they will return. They will return a small amount of hospitality. Your family showed my wife Jill when she visited Quito uh, over the spring. En realidad para devolver un poquito de la hospitalidad que usted nos mostró junto con su señora cuando mi señora fue a visitar aquí. She enjoyed it so much I wasn't sure she was coming home. Lo pasó también que no sabía si iba a volver. Today we're going to keep building on the progress we've made. Together we made historic strides on migration. En realidad vamos a seguir trabajando juntos porque en realidad trabajando juntos hemos hecho muchos avances históricos en el tema de migración. And this afternoon we'll discuss how we can deepen our security and our economic partnership even further than it is right now. Y esta tarde vamos a hablar de cómo podemos profundizar nuestras relaciones en el tema de seguridad y economía. That I really appreciate the work you have done to improve crop insurance. I couldn't agree more. This is a fundamental tool, a critical tool, and uh, I appreciate all the work that's been done to uh, be able to make it more accessible. I particularly appreciate programs like NAP uh, making them more accessible to producers to help manage the risks of their operations. But could you talk a little bit more about the steps uh, you've taken to make these programs accessible? And, what your recommendations are for building on them in the next Farm Bill. I'll start, and then I might turn to my um, colleague, Administrator Bunger. You know, in all our farm uh, programs, we're all, always trying to make them work better for producers. And in the case of crop insurance, it's, it's through looking for ways to provide new products through our 508H process. It's looking for ways to expand opportunities like uh, whole farm and micro farm that provide opportunities for specialty crop producers and others. So with everything we're doing, we're looking, we're trying to open up the doors to, to make our uh, crop, whether it's crop insurance or other um, safety net programs available to as many types of producers to recognize the diversity of agriculture as we can. We think that remains important. And even with our ad hoc uh, disaster programs, we, we structure them in a way to encourage folks to take advantage of, of whether it's NAP or crop insurance. So we think, again, crop insurance is absolutely vital, but, but let me turn to uh, Administrator Bunger. Thank you, Undersecretary. Thank you, Senator, for the question. As a daughter of a fourth generation farmer and now being a fifth generation on this same land, my husband and I have been farming together for the last 40 years. The last 27 years, crop insurance has been a cornerstone of our operation. And today, 27 years later, his corn and bean policy is the best in the world. And so it's my personal commitment that we also elevate specialty crop growers, we also elevate our urban egg 